On this episode of Sportsman's News Television, we're here in Utah on a Cooperative Wildlife Management Unit, a CWMU. What that means is these guys get to set their own season dates, roughly 90 days, which is within the boundaries of the State Wildlife Agency. So we get to hunt elk from early in September all the way through November, and you never know when that's going to become very beneficial. I'm hunting with Tony Johnson, who's one of our pro members who took advantage of the opportunity to get a discount by being a pro member. We're going with one of our platinum approved outfitters, Kobe Hunt, Utah Big Game Outfitters, and he has put together something with this CWMU, Dana Jenkins, and these guys are great. Everybody went out of their way to make this a great hunt. Stick around, this is going to be a good show. Nothing says elk hunting like the golden leaves of autumn, the glow of a wall tent in the cool evening air, and the bugle of a bull looking to defend his harem. This is a great time to be in the elk woods and have a tag in your pocket. Utah is one of the few states that allows elk to be hunted during the prime of the rut and with a rifle. These are truly once in a lifetime hunting opportunities for those fortunate enough to draw a tag. However, the CWMUs sell these tags each and every year in the Sportsman's News Pro Membership Sweepstakes. Purchase one of these great hunts to give away annually, as well as provides a few memberships an opportunity to purchase these tags. Tony Johnson from Arkansas is the lucky recipient of this great tag, and we're going to do everything in our power to find him a giant. We covered nearly every inch of this 10,000 acre plus ranch over the next three days and only turned up a few smaller bulls off the property. The severe drought had dried up stock tanks that hadn't been dry in over half a century. This property usually holds good numbers of cow elk, which is essential when you're hunting the rut, and they had left with the lack of water and green grass. It was obvious that our hopes for harvesting Tony a bull was a bust. Yeah, so far it's been been pretty slow. Uh, the elk haven't really kicked into the rut yet. They're about 10 days behind with the drought, and uh, been pretty pretty tough, pretty tough hunting so far. A conversation with Kobe and Dana about coming back late in the season when the bulls are on this ranch, which is their winter range, was welcomed with open arms. They wanted success as bad as we did. I'm not sure how many of you people watching this understand how big of a deal it is to have a customer come back after having a tough, or in this case, an impossible hunt. It's hard to harvest an animal that isn't there, and both Kobe and Dana could have had us hunt our other two days and try to make the most of it. A platinum approved outfitter is an outfitter that puts people before profit, and both Utah Big Game Outfitters and Sportsman's Hunting Adventures meet this litmus test. We're headed back late November to the same place we had hunted in September, but this time it's winter and the bulls are already starting to pull under the winter range. first morning of our hunt puts a smack dab in the midst of a winter storm. Getting up on top of the mountain was going to be a job in itself, let alone trying to spot a viable shooter in this nasty weather. 20% chance of snow today, Mike. <laughs> so what do you think? I think we can make it. Think so? Yeah. Well, Tony, you were here friggin' in September, and now we're about two minutes into hunting, and we've got a shooter. What do you think? Oh, man. I'm getting pumped. Uh, <laughs> seen a lot more already than what we did in September. And... After some maneuvering, Dana got us out to a lookout point, which would give us a good vantage point if the weather broke. After an hour of sitting, there didn't seem to be any break in sight, and the snow was piling up. Between gusts, we were able to pick up a bachelor herd of bulls cross canyon and in a good place for a stock. It took us nearly two hours to get back to the area where the bulls were bedded 
due to the severe winter conditions. We moved slowly and methodically down the ridge, peeking over the top and hoping they would be there. We finally determined that the bulls had their fill of the winter wonderland and probably moved into the trees. The next morning, the skies were clear and the conditions were perfect to hunt elk. We made it to the top of the mountain in the fresh snow and we were out on top of prime lookouts as the sun rose. We would be able to see a good majority of the mountain face and more importantly, we could see the fingers where the bulls were the day before. Dana immediately spotted two bedded bulls across the canyon from us. After settling in behind the rifle, Tony didn't feel comfortable and we moved up the hill for a closer shot. But the bulls got up and on the move. Tony got in position and the bulls moved closer to us towards their escape route. At 450 yards, the bulls stopped and Tony decided to take the shot. This spooked the bulls and they were gone before we could try again. Yeah, we uh, come up here the early uh, September for elk hunt and uh, with the drought, just a very bad condition. Uh, we seen no life at all. Uh, so I was able to come back on the uh, late hunt in November here, and uh, we've been able to see a lot of movement, lots of bulls, good bulls. Uh, had, uh, had three this morning that we was uh, able to get on and uh, just uh, let them, they, they done their thing, uh, missed shot. And, uh, so uh, we're looking at them and fixing to go after them this afternoon. Since we had seen the bulls from the day before on our morning setup at long range, we decided to make our way to the other end of the ranch and try to make a play. Once we got through the trees, we immediately saw elk in the skyline and sure enough, it was the huge five by six from the day before. This was an old mature bull and definitely what Tony had come to Utah for. It took us nearly 30 minutes to get into position with only the crest in the hill and one small bush for our cover. Right on him, right in the shoulder. Whenever you're ready. Crushed him. Oh. Crushed him. <laughs> First bull elk, baby. Six. Wonderful, wonderful. Nothing but net. Crushed him, baby. Crushed him. <laughs> nice He's shooting. Thank you. My name's Elf. Like, bring it home to daddy. <laughs> yeah, bring, bring it, it home. home to daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was sweet. Beautiful sun Woo. on him. He piled up. He good. Tony was able to bag this bull because of Sportsman's News, longtime relationships with great outfitters like Utah Big Game Outfitters. We've hunted with Kobe for many years and they know that our members are special. Both Kobe and Dana really went the extra mile to bring us back and it really paid <laughs> off. <laughs> Good job, bro. Oh yeah. Look at that son of a guy. You got a place on the wall for that guy? Wonderful day up here on the mountain. <clears throat> like we said earlier, it was a blizzard yesterday. The skies cleared out last night. Wonderful weather. Temperature warmed up. Uh, help come out. And uh, we was able to sneak up on him and got a shot. It was a wonderful experience. If you'd like to benefit from these great relationships, make sure you join the Pro Membership Sweepstakes. We have a winner every 10 days. Sign up online at promembershipsweepstakes.com where you get to hunt and fish like the pros. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Sportsman's News Television. We'll see you next time. <laughs>